spiritual Israel. That same land of Palestine, Jerusalem, which is a part of the African continent before the Suez Canal broke it away, is a promise to those who embrace the gospel and the faith. Not by ethnic um, lineage, but by the faith, those who are of the faith of Abraham. This faith, which his majesty himself represents, is the hope that this kingdom would be established on earth and that man would one day inherit immortality. The and unjust rule of the world would be overthrown, subdued and punished when the Messiah comes. And I quote from Isaiah 24, And shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the kings of the earth, the high ones that are on high, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners and gathered in the pit and be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem before his ancients gloriously. Ending of Isaiah 24, verse 21 to 23. When the nations attempt to oppose the Messiah's installment as king in the kingdom, this is what Zacharias says will occur. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And it shall come to pass that every nation that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall come to, and it shall be, that who shall, will not come up of all the families of the earth into Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon him shall be no rain. These are some of the basic characteristics of the kingdom which is promised and which Christ preached. If you look through his gospel, even when he sent the disciples out to preach before he was crucified, they had a gospel preaching, the gospel of the kingdom. That time they preached nothing about the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This was later added to the gospel to show that one had to accomplish immortality in order to set up this kingdom. So we can see that the church of the whole failed to understand the Old Testament and the Greek and Roman mind instead of the Hebrew mind came to dominate the church's outlook. From that disaster, and I quote from a book by Sir Anthony Buzzard, from that disaster the church has never been has never recovered, either in doctrine or in practice. Many of the, these Gentile believers and theologians have attempted to divorce Jesus from his Hebrew roots and background in the Old Testament and make him into a Greek and Roman God. They've attempted to create another Jesus other than the historical one. And as Sister Bradbird quoted, Rastafarians are amongst the first students of the scriptures since the time of the original disciples of Jesus Christ who have brought the gospel of the kingdom back to earth and stripped it, stripped it of its contamination with pagan Greek concepts. To most Rastafarians, the kingdom is in our midst, but yet to be established in power at the return of the Messiah when the meet shall near the earth. Now that I have attempted to identify the true Christian faith in its original form and context, we will have to redefine and reaffirm our faith in a Christian light, in keeping with the teachings of His Imperial Majesty, Hylas the I and the Holy Bible. Being disciples of His Majesty, we are obligated to follow His instructions and example. He has advised us that the Bible is the rallying point of all humanity. In order to redefine our faith, we will have to accept the message of the Bible and surrender all previously held concepts that are, that are in contradiction to its teachings and what our leader says. His Majesty says that we must read and study the Bible and accept with clear conscience the Bible and its great message. The Bible and its great message, which is the message of this kingdom 
and have it finally be established and ultimately established in the person of Jesus Christ. Or we cannot hope for salvation, he says. Now it is important that we learn Hebrew and other languages such as Gies and the culture of the time of Jesus. However, since most of us do not know these languages being separated from our roots, I give thanks that the Bible is translated into English, the only tongue that we knew when we were stripped of our roots and our language. It is to be noted that some people say the Bible is a reactionary book, but if you note, from the very first time when our fathers who were prevented from reading during slavery learned to read, and they read and opened the book of Genesis, chapter 2, they read of Ethiopia, the ancient land of Cush, as being one of the lands that the river Gihan, which watered the Garden of Eden, flowed through. This evoked in them a consciousness that Ethiopia must have been a part of the Garden of Eden. These writings of the scriptures included more than 66 books. There are the books such as Maccabees 1 and 2, Judith, Enoch, and many others. These were excluded from the King James Version. Yet, it is a message which remains one and the same in the King James Version that has been used by our fathers in their struggle to know their physical and spiritual roots and destiny as a nation under God. As I have mentioned also, that when our people were dispersed from the African continent to these places, it is my personal belief, and it's been shown by historians and confirmed by the Patriarch of the Ethiopian Church and by his Imperial Majesty Hadislas himself, that Ethiopian people and the people of Jamaica are brothers by blood. We believe that our people were sieved among the nations of Africa, and when slaves were brought after Jerusalem was destroyed, when we were dispersed, going to the fall of the kingdom, when our people had turned their backs on God, we were saved among the nations of Africa, and through slavery we had been removed to these parts of the world. Because in Deuteronomy it was predicted that because of the sins of our, our fathers, some of us would be taken away in the holds of ships and enslaved for over 400 years. I don't believe any people in history fit that description as us. Yet, today we speak of spiritual Israel, which means those who accept the faith. Which means God will gather a remnant from every nation, kindred and tongue, of who accept his faith. Because we know even amongst our African peoples, there are Jebusites, Hittites, Amorites, and many who even help to sell us into these lands. Now, just as how I, I said that we find the world Jewry and Christendom guilty of ignoring the everlasting promise contained in the Davidic Covenant, and a legitimate representative is Imperial Majesty Hadislas I in the royal family, so too are many of the exponents of the doctrine of Rastafari guilty of ignoring the significance and importance of Jesus Christ. In this regard, a Rastafarian leader by the name of Dr. Vernon Carrington Gatt the founder of the 12 tribe of Israel organization is an exception. Through his teachings, new light and understanding has been brought to the doctrine of Rastafari. This is my testimony, because at first as a youth, and also I'd like to acknowledge the presence of certain elders who, even the early tradition, had went amongst and they helped to teach and to educate me about his imperial majesty and the, the struggle of our early brothers. I also wish to acknowledge um, my mother who is present, who I did not acknowledge in the beginning.
leadership, Sister Dana. Who many times as a youth coming home late at night, you see it out of her pot. And she has continued this day through great trials and tribulation and upheld the faith. Yes. <laughs> so, who are you? Don't feel no way. You are acknowledged. Yes. I remember a virgin by the name of Brother Jerry Joseph who came to me, went to Excelsior as a youth and said, because we were going all around, trying to meet the rest of the man and learning, hoping to find a movement which was fulfilling, going to the African continent. Because from we hear of the faith, we give thanks also for brother historian, who I don't know if present, who gave me the first book on Rastafari, The Promised Key, in which I read about the courage of His Majesty, and how the British royal family brought up the scepter and acknowledged Haris Lassie as the longest reigning monarch in the world. And from that time, Brother, Brother Joseph came and said, I meet a Rastaman, you know, talking about Ethiopian World Federation and the 12 tribes of Israel and looking together, 12 men from the 12 months representing the 12 tribes of Israel to go to Ethiopia and tell his man that the last tribes have been found. I said, what? I will find this man. Then Brother Eva Martin, who was blessing him first, took me down into trench town. And when I entered, I met this short little man with beard and like a khaki shirt. And immediately when, I st when he spoke, I realized that this man wasn't an other man. The word of God was speaking through him. Now some men walk and some men and brethren walk and talk about Brother Gad, this and that. But when I testify of him, I'm speaking about a man through whom I hear God speak. Because I'm not here to glorify man, but to give credit where credit is due. Because what I am and who I am, it is a sum total product of what my brethren, my parents, my king, Haile Selassie, have made me. So, I said, when I go inside and I see him, we you know zeal, you know? The first thing I see him do, he said, every knee have to bow, and every tongue have to confess. I'm going to knee like this. That Jesus Christ is Lord. And then, the word Lord means master. Master, that is the master. The master messiah who overcome death. They have no power over him. And then, the said to him, he said, I don't know, you would see his majesty, Emperor the Celeste I, as according to the David promise, the house of David, the children of David, the scripture said, in the step of the of David, when he crowned, that is the messiah was come. So he said, well, this is the appearance of the Messiah. Excuse me, is this Brother Fillmore? Yes. I would like to acknowledge Brother Fillmore Loranga. I respect that. <laughs> so, we said, we see his majesty, we see him, Jesus Christ, return. See him flesh account until David goes to turn. And he said, see him spirit, but different flesh. And from that he knows said nothing more to me about that. And then another time I see him sit in a corner, lonely looking, because he tells us to read our Bible. Because you know, when he read against some things that all of them attack, he you knows start to begin to. <laughs> and he seems to have a lonely corner and he said, the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And until him shall he get into the people be. And him said, I don't want a big school, but I want to know what until means. And then he goes to nothing more, you know? 
But many times you see him walk and many of are reasoning and saying, we're reaching the Bible bridging. You understand? Because him read it off already. So him see what is down there and what is my himself so that we must accept. Right. So that thought rested me coming, coming, coming down throughout the, the time and the ages. And then I remember another important episode which I'll mention quickly. After the 40th coronation anniversary of His Majesty, when I got stood up and he made an announcement. He said, he that have an ear is let him hear. All the kings in Israel had a cycle of rain for 40 years. And after that rain, they had it to a successor. And that His Majesty was going to step down from the throne and hand it to the next one in line. Anyone here remember that? Yes, sir. That was an explosion. I was like, what? Want to succeed, Jack? <laughs> so, shortly after we see His Majesty step from the throne and the military dirt take charge. Then on occasion again, before the traveling, I guess stood up in a meeting and said, again, he that have an ears, let him hear. Now it's important because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hearing means an intelligent perception of the word of God. You know when you say to your picnic, you hear me? That don't mean it's just a sound you hear, but if you understand and if you believe what I say. He does have one ears, let him hear. He said it three times. He said the same Jesus Christ that you see crucified 2,000 years ago rose and ascended to the right hand of the Father from whence he shall come against upon the throne of David to judge the earth and inaugurate this eternal kingdom. And he said it three times. Yet when he appeared and I read an interview and said similar things, it was like a bombshell even amongst the membership of the 12 tribes of Israel. Because somebody hears what they never hear. They heard what our preconceived notions then. Because the question is asked, who is Shiloh? And visiting Jerusalem at a tape of Bujubantan and was playing till Shiloh will come. And same time one of the youth who know Hebrew said to me, you know what Shiloh means, dread? So we usually think it means like the one who brings peace. You know? so it means he is who's right, it is. So in brief, which we have many scriptural quotations here, the understanding about the coming of the kingdom, because remember, even when I said Jesus Christ trod the earth, his disciples had hoped that that was the time of the setup of the kingdom. So I wouldn't say that they were mistaken to believe that, because in every time a king that is crowned every Davidic house, it is the hope of that generation that all things are fulfilled in their time the messianic kingdom to be established. Yet Christ revealed to them it wasn't that time. And he taught them from the law and the prophets for 40 days after his resurrection and their eyes, their understanding were opened unto the scriptures. So same way now our understanding is being opened unto the scriptures. That These promises that have not yet to be not, not yet been fulfilled are to be fulfilled in the person of the same Jesus who was crucified, and the heavens, according to the scriptures, shall retain him, Jesus, until 
the restitution of all the things spoken by the prophets since the earth began. Sit down at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. If this man accomplished immortality, which in no way denies the divinity of his imperial majesty, Bradislas the first, who represents the throne of David and his family, yet the ultimate fulfillment of the eternal kingdom to be set up on earth is yet to be fulfilled. And according to the scriptures, according to these testimonies of his imperial majesty, perhaps that's the first, are to be fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ himself. And I'll make one quotation, or a second to last quotation, <laughs> in which the, the, the Sadducees asked Jesus one question. They came to him and said, the Messiah, whose son is he? And he said, son of David. No, no, he asked them. And they said, son of David, which means the descendant of David. And he said unto them, how is it then that David in vision said, that the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. How come is Christ a descendant of David and David is calling him Lord? In Hebrew, Adonai means the Lord Creator. Adon means Lord like my Lord. How come is he calling one master? But David in vision, because the promise was that Brethren, let me freely speak to you of the patriarch David, that is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us until this day, and that David has not ascended into the heavens. Therefore, this promise that was made to David that he did not see corruption was fulfilled in Christ Jesus, who was granted the sure mercies of David that he would not see corruption. And that all the kings who sit upon the Davidic throne are there to hold the scepter of the Davidic kingdom and to represent God to man until Shiloh comes and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Now what does this mean for us? I will just make a quick conclusion. So what shall we do now? To those who think that this admission and testimony of faith in Jesus Christ means that one has relinquished following the precepts of His Majesty, I will say this. It is because I am a Rastafarian, a follower of the King, why submit and relinquish any previously held concept which is in contradiction to His Majesty's views. It is He who has revealed Christ to us as the Lord Messiah and Savior of the world. of others, the tradition of men, I have been led to this conclusion. Again, the acceptance of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in no way contradicts the significance of His Majesty in accordance with the David Covenant and promise. The royal family of Ethiopia represents the cohabited body of Christ. Jesus Christ represents the non-cohabited body of Christ. As I just last see, the first has said, and as you will read if you have not read, Therefore, O Christians, let us arise, and with the spiritual zeal and earnestness which characterized the apostles and early Christians, let us lead our brothers and sisters to our Savior, Jesus, who only can give life in his fullest sense. Now, he says so. He also advised us that we must have faith in the Almighty, it is most important that we, as Rastafarians, come to grips with our doctrine and faith in relation to our concept of the Almighty. 
His Majesty himself had his last year as a title, elect of God. He was not elect of himself, as some would say or imply. He always acknowledged that he was the instrument in the hands of the Almighty. In other words, that eternal word God manifested through him. Because God wasn't born in 1892. He ever was, he ever is, and ever shall be. He who was and is and ever shall be the eternal I am, manifested to us, the sons of God, and manifested in the highest form in the person of the imperial majesty of Hans as the first who represents the David throne. And if you teach the gospel according to the scriptures in this way, you'll find multitudes come to the face of Rastafari. Because we are to reason, how good and pleasant it is for many to, help, to dwell together in unity. And I will mention, which I mentioned to Brother Sam one at a time, and it's, it stuck with me when I was going amongst him. These brothers had met his imperial majesty in Brian Slash the first himself. <coughs> and they know that it was that I opened when I went to Ethiopia and see that it was an ancient Christian faith. Yet, to a certain extent, still, I would say, influenced by Greek Christianity. Why I say this is because many of the icons in the church have these same white Jesus you book upon, and many of the practices and the worship and adoration of Mary still exist in it. Am I correct, my brethren? So now we have to, we have to resort to biblical Christianity. That is the source of our faith. Because as Moses said, our Christianity is not restricted to any given church. And we do not wish to make distinctions. I remember reason the brethren, and I mentioned Brother Sam, and Brother Sam doesn't quite remember. That his Majesty had told him when they were departing, that my brethren, I accept you all as a father and a brethren. But man must not worship the image of man, but rather the Almighty. To me, meaning, when we worship God, we do not worship the physical structure of man, because greater is he that is within you than is in the world. Yeah. God. But the scriptures say it. And 
His Majesty said, we have to accept with a clear conscience or there can be no hope for salvation. Getting our doctrine in order in what is taught in the Bible and by His Majesty is crucial to our blessing and prosperity. We have to be courageous, such as the example set by Brother Gad, in bringing about reform to our doctrine. I would not even say reform, but growth, development, because anything that doesn't grow will die and pass away. And I said, the knowledge of God is a progressive revelation. Any day you stop, learn that is the end of everything. You become stagnant. As Jesus himself taught, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. In, in Revelation, John the Divine himself mistook the created angel of God for the Creator and fell before his feet to worship. And the angel said to him, and John said, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said to me, See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This spirit in the Almighty and His promise, or covenant, is the defining factor that will make all believers the children of Abraham. And I quote again, Even as Abraham believed God and was counted for him as righteousness, know ye therefore that ye that are of the faith of Abraham, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham. No, 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 listen, no, the gospel you know, was preached unto Abraham, you know. That is long before Christ was crucified, you know. So the gospel could not have composed primarily of something about the death and resurrection of Jesus alone. That was later added to the gospel, the good news, that here now is the champion, the immortal man, who are the messiahs who were a night before, because of the sin of death, could not implement. Here is the man chosen who will implement it because he has put on the structure of immortality. A structure that is not bound by time or space or by gravity. You see them thing where you say science fiction, how man move and come and go? All right. It's the Bible all them conceptions come from. And yet people believe that faster than they believe the Bible. Therefore, all that ever have repented and believed the good news about the obedience of one man, Jesus, who shed his innocent blood to redeem us from the curse of the law, shall be saved. But what does this mean? It means that those who have the confidence that Jesus is the champion, who has finally conquered death and now able to restore the Garden of Eden to earth, will inherit salvation, which is eternal life in the land given to Abraham. The faithful will be co-heirs of the land grant promise given to Abraham. And the promise to the disciples of Christ was that they will rule with him in the kingdom as co-rulers in that kingdom. Yet, His Majesty has told us that it is necessary for one to conduct himself as I've been taught in the Bible. This means we have to repent for the kingdom is at hand, which means Many of our ways, especially me, myself, as a brethren, ways of lust and fornication, which is a sexual relationship outside the divine union, adultery, <laughs> desiring your brethren's wife, envy, drunkenness, lust, warmongering, etc., must be repented of. Here, yeah, why not? Know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor idolaters, nor homosexuals, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor starchers shall inherit the kingdom of God. So, it's a rough stuff of a bitch. <laughs> When time has sort of elapsed on us, and um, let's give Sister Anna Bradbo, who's a happy birthday for you. My final word, not 
to be your patience, but since it's a long time, we don't have fresh for reasoning, and there's a question time to my. Just go and I pray. The Christian churches will have to accept and preach the David Covenant, the Kingdom of God, and acknowledge his imperial majesty and his family as a legitimate representative of the David Kingdom on earth. And my brethren will have to accept Jesus as the Christ, the Savior of mankind, if they are to become true followers of his imperial majesty and royal as the first. Thanks be to God who yet found a man who was bold enough to stand in the gap of understanding between the Christian faith and Rastafari. As none has been found in the time of Ezekiel to do so to prevent destruction of the land. And I quote from Ezekiel, And I sought a man among them that should make a hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But at that time he found none. So give th thanks that one has been courageous enough to stand up and speak boldly. And for these few words and for all the visitors, well wishers, friends, brethren, we pray that the Spirit of the Almighty will guide you safely back to your destinations and that we will grow in unity and strength and that the mark of the true disciple, which is to love each other, we will manifest it in our Christian responsibility that the hungry be fed, the naked clothed, the sick nourished, the age protected, the infant cared for. Which means our brothers and sisters who are living in Ethiopia, in Shashamani in particular, and even here in Jamaica, we have to start building homes for our elders. We have to start building schools for our children. We have to start assisting and building an infrastructure in Ethiopia that can house people who are to come. In brief, we have to start do feasibility and right projects to settle our people in the African continent until the kingdom come. I give thanks. say to you that because you have set your heart to love the truth, the God of truth will reveal himself to you. And that is not, I'm not decrying your announcement of Iris last. I speak from a personal heart, not so much from writing. But as a man who has pursued truth to the ultimate revelation of Jesus Christ in a personal way, I'm saying to you, because you have set your heart to seek truth even to the controversy and contradiction of your colleagues and opponents, the God, of all, the God Almighty, the God of all truth will reveal himself to you and bless you. Amen. Similar. 
Now, what I want to ask you is, what, how do you see a similarity in these two stories? And if there's a similarity in these two stories, what is the relevance of this similarity to ones who are searched for the truth in a this diaspora as black people? That one question still. Yes, give thanks to you. Um, thank you for your, um, your statement and um, your question. Without being lengthy, but I think the best as the first who we have named ourselves after and said, the divine man will find truth for himself. I know that other peoples, other nations have their cultures. And as Maris himself has said, since man cannot interfere into the realm of the Almighty, we should live peacefully with all things of other faiths. So why do they believe that I said that I can't tell you that, my brother? I can only give a personal testimony of myself and of my faith and the direct impact has been given to me by His Imperial Majesty Last year. in regards to Christ Jesus. But we can meet another time. No problem, brother. We have everything ready. Basically, by the fact that you are a man, you are attuned to all that exists, you are attuned to God. And you search through the part of the fact that teacher, you must have, that through the teachings of the souls, the power of the Holy Spirit, which is all manifestation of the same God, that one can attain this level of divinity within itself, one can transcend itself. Now, when that happens, it comes in, cast a certain light upon what you spoke on, because you spoke on the creation of a political or a social, let's say, heaven or on earth. But what we're really penetrating that any physical thing has a period, has a time in which it exists. And it's the non-physical aspects of self that cause, let's say, eternal or immortal existence, right? And as such, any eternal society on the earth will require that one, everyone within that society has attained that crisis, has attained that divinity, right? And so I wanted to ask this question, the question about what about my case that we scheme and reason, right? What is the significance there and then what you have said as it is that what the people stands for, what is the stands for? It does. <laughs> as I said, this is our reasoning session, you know? <laughs> yes, this is a reasoning time. Anyhow. I personally don't minimize or make trivial the significance of Jesus Christ. I don't see him as just another prophet or another one who has a divine revelation. I see him as God manifesting in flesh. I see him as the, the one who triumphed over death by submitting himself totally to the will of God and therefore breaking the spell 
of death and bondage which is upon mankind. And again, I would exalt the brethren to closely study the teachings of His Majesty and perhaps as the first. And give us the teachings of His Majesty because, you know, we don't want too much of a philosophy. Yet, man still must seek other knowledge, secular knowledge, and read extensively on another faith. But remember, our faith is based upon the biblical foundation of our patriarchs. And as Marisei has said, there's nothing, even his writings are autobiography, there's nothing which was not written in the Holy Scriptures, which meaning all the experiences of man, all the wisdom accumulated of man, the self of man, is in the Holy Scriptures. And as regards to Melchizedek, his imperial majesty has lasted the first, you see him as a priest of the art of Melchizedek, because notably, he's the only Ethiopian man in government who has a beard. And that was the priesthood symbolism of a priesthood spokesman of God. Having the, the characteristic or you know, those features of a holy man. And as regards to Christ, the similarity is that without beginning, without end, he is a high priest of the order of Melchizedek, not of the Levitical order. Give thanks. Any other question? The people. For every book, this 
I will prove it to you. The first five book of the Bible is written by Moses. That is not true. And Moses is thousand years after creation. <laughs> but remember, in the second book of Genesis, 13 verse, it tells you of the, land, the river that comes past the whole land of Ethiopia. Ethiopia, which is over 40,000 years old. Yet still, within this time, I'm noting up, whatever we as people right now will be seen and learned by those who come after us, the children after us. Yeah? Why is it that we do not look at these documents of 40,000 years old, a civilization which worked, where you never have words to kill, you don't have words to eat, you don't have prisons. Why do not look at those type of civilization and say how those teachings then can help us now? And if I class that being the emperor of Ethiopia, when them come through the line of David, or through the greater line, which is the line of a sister, yeah? as the was trying to say. If, if his mind come through that kind of line, it means all this agency is embodied within that being that we call Emperor Ayas Lassie the first. Yeah? And if that is embodied within that being, why is it that when this man is saying, learn, read, with a clear conscience, that's not a part of the thing that informs us about his majesty. And therefore, that makes the part of our life. Why do we continue to hold a book which on the one hand says good here, and on the other hand implies bad? Just as what you were saying from, from the day, from the whole day, that you're going to put the enemy, make the enemy become the first soul. Yeah? Which in and of itself is something evil.